So we've spent a lot of time understanding single qubits up to now. It's time now to move on to understand many qubit systems, the type of systems which are used to do actual quantum computations. To understand these systems, we need to add just a single element to our repertoire, a two qubit gate called the controlled not gate. All right, let me uh, just straight up introduce uh, the control not to you, explain what it does. It's often written in this way. Sometimes uh, people also just write C not. Uh, and it's a two qubit gate, so I'll draw it in the quantum circuit language at first. So we have two wires representing two qubits, and the notation used typically is to have a straight line, a little circle and a cross there, and a dot uh, up here. I'm having a little bit of trouble drawing it in, unfortunately, uh, with my drawing program. Um, so this uh, qubit uh, up here, the top line, uh, this is called the control uh, qubit, for reasons which will become clear in a second. And this one down here is called the target qubit for the controlled NOT gate, or the C-NOT uh, gate. And uh, we haven't actually formally said what the possible states of a two-qubit system are, but you could probably guess. Uh, we have uh, now four computational basis states corresponding to the four uh, possible states of a two-bit uh, system, so 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. And for a qubit, uh, not only can we have those four states, but we can also have superpositions of them with uh, uh, arbitrary amplitudes, alpha, beta, ga gamma, uh, and delta, and uh, you know, the sum of the squares of the absolute values of these uh, must be one uh, in much the same kind of a way. It's, it's the same normalization condition uh, as we had for a single qubit. Now, the control not gate is, much like the quantum not gate, more or less a classical uh, gate. Uh, what it does is very simple. It, if this uh, control qubit is set uh, to 1, like over in these states, then it flips the target qubit, and otherwise it does uh, nothing. So just to be a little bit more precise, if we had the state 0, 0, so the control qubit is not set, so it does nothing, just leaves the state alone. Uh, if it's 0, 1, so again the control qubit is, is not set to uh, 1, so it does nothing to the second qubit. But when we have the 1, 0 state, the control qubit is set to 1, and so it flips the second qubit. It applies a NOT gate. That's why it's called a controlled NOT, uh, obviously. And if we have 1, 1 come in, well, the control qubit is set, and so it flips the second qubit back to 0. And there's a nice uh, easy notation uh, for this, which is to write x, y, these x can be 0 or 1 and y can be 0 or 1, and you can sum up all four of these uh, actions. It just leaves the control qubit alone, but flips the target qubit if x is set to 1. So this is addition uh, modulo uh, 2. Uh, so 1 plus 1 is, is 0 in uh, addition modulo uh, 2, as we expect from down here, this last equation. Okay, and that's all there is to the control not gate. It's a, a very simple gate. Uh, you know, these actions uh, you know, are applied uh, linearly to superpositions uh, as uh, per usual. It's, it's really quite a simple uh, idea. Uh, let's just write out a uh, matrix uh, representation for it, an explicit matrix representation. So, you know, the idea here, of course, is, uh, let me go back actually, is, is to imagine that you have, you're writing your quantum state as a four-dimensional vector now with components alpha for the zero, zero state, beta for the zero, one, gamma for the one, zero, and delta uh, for the one, one. And again, we can write a matrix representation for uh, the action uh, on uh, this uh, vect column vector uh, notation. So what is that matrix? Well, it's pretty easy to figure out. It's a 4 by 4 matrix, of course, because it has to take a four-dimensional vector to another four-dimensional vector. And this is you know, 
the uh, the output states just to write down to make it a little bit uh, easier to see. So the action on the zero zero state is just to leave it alone. So it comes back as a zero zero state. The action on the zero one state, the second column, is also to leave it alone because the control qubit is not set zero one zero zero. But when we have the one zero uh, state here in the third column, uh, the second qubit. Uh, the, the target qubit is in fact uh, flipped and we're left with the 1-1 one, one state. And uh, finally the 1-1 one, one, uh, gets taken to 1-0. So this is the matrix representation uh, for the control knot. And you can verify by explicitly multiplying uh, it out uh, that this uh, matrix is in fact a unitary matrix as we found for uh, single qubit gates and as will generally be the case uh, for quantum uh, gates. So this matrix is sometimes uh, useful uh, for verifying uh, identities involving the controlled uh, not gate. It's not a bad thing to have in your repertoire. Okay, um, so that's the basics of the controlled not. Of course, the controlled NOT gate doesn't just appear in two qubit computations, it might also appear in many qubit computations. So let's imagine now that we have three qubits. And so we have computational basis states that look like you know, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, etc. And let's imagine uh, that we're applying a controlled NOT like this. Again, just a little dot there for the control qubit. Uh, and you can, I'm sure, guess what happens? Well, nothing at all happens to this first qubit, so we can write out you know, for an arbitrary computational basis state, that first qubit nothing is happening to. The control qubit also is not affected, the value there for the control, but the target is flipped if the control is set to 1. Okay, so you know, that's sort of the basics of what happens in a, in a mini uh, qubit. Uh, quantum circuit or quantum computation. So I've described the C0 as a classical uh, gate, but it can actually be combined with single qubit gates to do quite non-classical uh, things. So let me give you an explicit example of that. It's another two qubit computation. So let's assume that we start with the 0, 0 computational basis uh, state. And we apply a Hadamard to the first uh, qubit, and then we do a C0. And we ask ourselves, well, what, what's the output? So let's go through and, and figure it out uh, in detail. So the 0, 0 state, after applying the Hadamard, well, it's not going to have any effect at all on the, the second qubit, but it takes the 0 to an equal superposition of 0 and 1. So we end up with 0, 0 plus 1, 0, notice the, the second uh, qubit hasn't been changed at all, all over root 2. Now we apply the controlled NOT gate. Well, the 0, 0 isn't changed uh, at all, but the 1, 0 is changed to 1, 1 because the control qubit is set. Okay, so this output state, which is what comes out at the end, is in fact a highly uh, non-classical uh, state. It's an example, in fact, of what's called an entangled state, which we're going to talk about quite a bit uh, later. Uh, and the important thing is that it's not, there's no simple interpretation of this state as a classical state of the two qubits, unlike with the, uh, say, the computational uh, basis state. And in fact, the, these kinds of states can be used to do all sorts of interesting information processing tasks. We'll see them later uh, in superdense coding and also in quantum uh, teleportation. We'll also return later to discuss uh, entangled uh, states in a little bit more detail and what it means uh, exactly uh, to be entangled. But for now, yeah, just, just take this interesting piece of news uh, that, that the CNOT gate plus single qubit unitaries like the Hadamard can be used to do interesting, uh, create uh, interesting uh, non-classical uh, states. Okay, so that's the C0. Uh, we now have all the elements we need uh, to do uh, any uh, quantum computation, in fact. And so in the next video, we're going to talk about the, the general model of quantum computation and what it means to do universal quantum computation.